I've already messed up. Well, hello, fun seekers. Over my left shoulder here, I've got this 1984 Chevy K5 Blazer that I got from a place really close to my house. He's had it for about 21 years. It's been sitting here for 10 years. Now it's mine. And uh, my mission today is to start it up and drive it around the corner and maybe a mile and a half away to my house and uh, see what we can do with this thing. My name's Jason, and this is Grease Belly Garage. Come on. There we go. Come on, baby. Ah. They started this square body campaign or body style in 1981 and carried over, of course, to the Blazer. Now, this is like a survivor truck. It's always been in Bradenton, as far as I know. Um, I think the, I think my friend was a second owner. Mm -hmm. He agrees, second owner. It was tan, white on the bottom. This here is purple window tint. This is a common Florida thing. People used to get their windows tinted back in the 80s. And about 15 years later, it's this beautiful shade of purple. Got some all-terrain tires on it, BFGs. They... Might be a little flat spotted, but the tread's still good. This is one of the years I had the dual tailpipes. Pretty decent trailer hitch. There's really not a lot of rust on this rig anywhere. It's not too, too bad anyway. Some surface rust back here. And I didn't really see the top too good just yet, but I'm assured it's not too bad. We've got air compressor, air hoses, and accumulators. There's two accumulators for some reason, so I assume... This is the air conditioning stuff that's supposed to be under the hood. Spare tire mount and cover. This is the original cover, according to the, according to my friend. The top's never been off of this, according to my friend. This is a Silverado trim level. Got a little rust hole right up here. A little surface rust on the top, it appears. Chrome mirrors. Got the peeling chrome, plasti chrome, automatic locking front hubs. And something happened right here. I think this was from the first owner. He may have crunched a pole at a gas station, I think. Taco car? Bell. Taco Bell? A car at Taco Bell. Gotta be careful at Taco Bell, guys. I wonder if he got a crunch wrap. There's no blinker light housing in here, but I guess the blinker probably works. Oh, the hood's not bent. Well, let's see what the inside. Okay, when I first saw this, I was wondering why it had blue door panels and a blue dash. And my friend's friend, it looks like he put bed liner, perky liner or something on it. Kind of tried to touch all this up and make it look better. He actually did a pretty good job on it, to be honest with you. It looks good, but I think I'm going to try to get a tan dash pad, some tan door panels, and I think the carpet's been dyed maybe black. Got some original GM rubber mats. Here's the console's been painted black or with that same stuff. So you can see the tan it's supposed to be. Seat covers on here. Actually, it's got two seat covers on it. Looks like the original was worn through a bit Pretty sure this is a loaded up model. It's got tilt wheel, cruise control. Steering wheel's got that stickiness that these square bodies are so known for. AC, full gauges. Now the odometer, I think it says 50,000. It's a five digit odometer. I was just assured by my friend the mileage is 150. The back seat really looks pretty good. The back inside of the top looks really good. They painted all this plastic B-pillar trim, blue. Headliner's long gone. That's not unusual for any GM, really. But it looks pretty good in here. And this guy drove the snot out of this for a long time, up until about 10 years ago. And he told me that the gas lines were a little varnished up, probably. Okay, let's check out under the hood here. 
This is probably the easiest opening square body hood I've ever seen. My friend assured me he kept it lubed up. For some reason, it's got an orange painted power brake booster with a burgundy colored master cylinder. I think that was a dress up attempt. Ported vacuum switch has been deleted. 5.0 liter on the sticker here, so certainly, definitely a 305. Got some chrome valve covers. I'm pretty sure that's definitely an aftermarket Holley carburetor. Got some aftermarket spark plug wires. What are those Excels, it looks like. And we've got all of the air conditioning compressor mounts here, as well as all the connections. A little air conditioning lesson for you guys. Right there in the end of that tube is going to be the orifice tube. And that's got a little filter screen in it. And it's still there. And it is probably caked, plugged up bad. But these older air conditioning systems were really easy to work on because the evaporator is right there in that case and everything's right out here. Here's the RPO sticker, but I can't, can't really see all of it right now. Let me try to take a picture of this and zoom in on it. This is really a pretty solid truck, just a little bit, a little bit in a couple of corners. But typically in Florida, when you have a rusty car in Florida, it's always from the top down, just like this, always, because um, of the salt air. And I'm pretty sure my friend is right on when he says the fuel lines are probably varnished up. I guess he was having a little trouble with it the last time he ran it. I think I'm going to put my boat tank in, disconnect it down at the fuel pump from the fuel tank of the truck, put a battery in it, of course. Oh, here's an overflow tank. It's nice. We'll disconnect it down there. It's a fuel pump on the block. And hopefully there's some battery bolts for this. Normally I would just vice grip these cables to these top posts, but I don't really want to do that and drive it home. Check the... These radiator caps are such a pain in the butt. That looks almost completely empty. Oh. On a more positive note, it's got windshield washer fluid, so that's good. Have a look at the oil. Oh, it's clean. You're right. That's good. Well, it's not black black, but it ain't red red either. That's eh, halfway. I wish I was taller. Holy crap. I hate GM battery terminals. Another top tip, whenever you're getting these side post battery terminal bolts, just go ahead and get the longer ones with that spacer. And then that way you can actually do something with them. So I got these longer bolts with these spacers in it. Because they're a lot easier to work with. And of course, make sure you don't cross thread your bolt to the freaking battery. One down. Let's see if we get any sparks here. I pull your shorts up. Helps if you put the socket on the ratchet the right direction, you know what I mean? Well, let's see if I can cross thread this in there. Yeah, it lives until you cross threaded a side post battery. And tight. See any smoke? I don't smell any smoke and I don't see any smoke, so that's good. Red light? Right over. I got the air cleaner off and I put some True Fool down the carburetor because this thing turns over so good. stuck on the carburetor it won't move all right a quick update here for those that care that fuel line down there on the fuel pump is a booger to get off especially when you're overweight i went and got my heavy duty higher up step ladder 
and whatever this thing's costing me, you can add on to it in the tool budget because I had to run and get some pliers because I lost a tool bag. But to kind of offset that a bit, they had a PB Blaster was like buy one, get one free. So now I got like, I don't know, four or five cans of that. So the frustration continues on day two. But uh, the plan is to get this thing started and get it to my house today because I got other things to do tomorrow. Okay, I don't know how many days later, got the rubber hose onto the intake of the fuel pump and that is a booger to do. It's not nearly as easy as it looks. There's only that much space between the part of the frame and the bottom of that nipple. I almost just did an electric fuel pump. So I got that piped in through the pump to the Holley carburetor. Going over here and out into the passenger seat to my boat tank. And we're gonna prime her up now. Maybe. Okay, contact again. Oh, I gotta get stupid keys. Pump's working. All right, one more time. running um had they somebody had put a vacuum hose between the line there or to the carburetor got a little coolant flowing i think i hear a vacuum leak somewhere too Want the blue smoke around and we've got something leaking down here too i'm gonna pull it up and see if i can identify that fluid It will helps, but it ain't perfect. Oh, we got no brakes. Right to the floor. You got brakes when it goes to the floor all the way. We'll just have to take it easy. That's what we're gonna have to do here. You'll see what that leak is. Yeah, it's not too bad. I need to lose about 20 pounds though, or 50. Oh. I'm back. Okay, good. I thought it was overheating. All right, take two. <coughs> Suck it in, Jason. Just a squeaky belt. <coughs> hey. Alright, so far so good. Can't see anything out of the windshield. Got first gear. Well, it never shifted. That's not good. The brakes sort of work. I have to totally exhale every time I make a turn. 
I actually have lost a tad bit of weight, but obviously not enough for a square body. And it never does shift. So I would suspect I either got a vacuum problem. Well, I don't know if 700 R4s operate on vacuum or not. I actually thought it was more of a TV cable. The guy just turned right in front of me. That's good. I hear, you know what that is? Ah, there we go. The HVAC fan was screaming like my ex-wife. Yep, pretty sure we got a transmission problem. Sounds good though. I went and did the, uh, I broke the rule of putting windows down. And it's a power window and I'll probably never get it back up. Can't go too fast, I guess I'm gonna have to keep it. Well, there's no spinometer needle, so I don't know what it's gonna be going. Yeah, the spinometer needle's just gone. Is it? No, well, it's just gone. It's always good to sit in Florida traffic when you can smell gas fumes real bad. But I don't know if it's from my boat tank in the passenger seat or if it's leaking under the hood. Away we go. All right. Oh, a little bit of knocking. Probably should have just towed this to the house, to be honest with you. Transmission is not happy. And of course, I live on the I live on the busiest dead-end street in my county, and every single time I come to my house, there's a oncoming traffic, and I don't get that. Exhale, uh, turn. Oh. Okay. Well, that was comfortable. Shut it down before it catches on fire. Or maybe I should put this one. Oh, the window's going right up. Unreal. Check it out. Wow, maybe this thing ain't too bad. Okay, so I'm checking out all the, there's the no spinometer needle. And I'm not sure, but I could swear there was a radio in this thing the other day. I don't have to go back and rewatch my video. I may be wrong. Got the brake warning light on. Um, clock doesn't seem to work. I think the alternator gauge works. The oil pressure gauge, it doesn't have a needle either, but if it did, I think it'd be around 25. And more importantly, we got, got that loud cackle going on. Seems like the carburetor might be loading up a tad or something. Something's going on. I don't know which transfer case this rig has. I'll have to look into it. And the aftermarket temperature gauge is, uh, what is that, 190 or so? That's pretty good. Okay, here it is at the official GBG. Idling pretty smooth. You know what? I don't think it's leaking fuel after all. I think that was from where that hose sprayed everywhere. This is the only real concern I got on the body is this area right here. Cause you know I can get down inside of here and cause some problems. And this door, this door handle don't wanna look too good. There it goes. Now he said he couldn't get the back window up, but it looks to me like it's up. Wow, this thing's getting better by the second guys. We got carburetor problems. Yeah, and a GM truck if, or car, whenever you shut it down and you hear that, pshhh, that's definitely an HVAC issue from one of those lines on those dampers in the back. So when I do the dash pad, I'll probably locate that and try to fix that. Well, that's gonna do it for the first video on the K5 Blazer. I'm uh, finishing you up from the golf cart here. I'm gonna go cruise up and down the road a little bit, cool off and get these. In Florida, we have these things called no -seums, and they will eat you up. The next time I jump on the K5, I'm going to probably have to fix the brakes and investigate the transmission and see why it doesn't shift. I don't remember if 700R4s are TV cable or vacuum um, input transmissions like a, t like a Turbo 350. 
anybody has any information about that. Um, not that I couldn't figure it out quick, but drop a comment down below and make sure you subscribe to my uh, exhilarating YouTube channel. And uh, in the meantime, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, I will catch you on the flip side. And make sure you give me a thumbs up. See you next time. Right. Tune in again. Thanks for watching. Yep.